Hey guys, it's Chris here with a wrap-up, and I'm calling it an everything wrap-up. It's like Emoji-a-thon. It is like the last year a -thon. It's, um, Pride of Pride, LGBTQ Books for a thon I'm just, I did a lot of things last month. I'm going to split this wrap-up into two different videos because if I waited, uh, if I tried to do one big video, I would not have to video out until the end of the month, and I know that. So, we're just going to jump into it. I'm just going to actually go down the list in the order that they are on my Goodreads as books that I've read. And, yeah, I read a lot of things last month. That's what I really want to split between the two. I think it's like 22 books or something like that. 22 books and plays and shorts all together. Um, so, yeah, this intro has already been like 55 seconds and I need you to just jump into this. <laughs> Which is the second. I really, really enjoyed the Shakespeare play. I gave it five stars. If you can see, actually, I moved in the way. There's a red book on my bottom shelf that, like, is standing behind some candles and stuff. That is my complete Pelican Shakespeare, that's where I read it on. Um, and yeah, I really enjoyed it. Um, but Richard's an interesting main character to follow. I feel like he is not a very morally gray character, and I love Shakespeare's morally gray characters, um, where he's not really that much of a bad guy, he just makes some dumb decisions. Um, he's a young king who makes some dumb decisions. So, I liked following it. It's the first of the War of the Roses quartet, I believe. And so I'm going to probably read the other three in the future, in the upcoming months, if I get a chance to. Um, so yeah, I enjoyed it. Five stars. Excited to see the film. I'm going to see the film soon. And then maybe I'll talk about the film and the book and the play. So, yeah. Going to watch that soon. I really, really enjoyed Honestly, Ben. I didn't, didn't expect to like the story nearly as much as I did. Um, I wasn't, I didn't think that Openly Straight needed a sequel. But I feel like this, as I was getting into the story, I was like, actually, this is, like, fantastic and what we really need it. I feel like Ben's perspective is just so much more fun to read through than Ray's perspective, even though I loved Openly Straight. Uh, Ben's just a very interesting character to me. Um, and, yeah, it's queer. It's fun to read. There's um, a asexual side character. There is a uh, non-binary side character. So yeah, I really like this story a lot. It was good. It was good. I wrote like a big review of it that you can check out on my website. Um, I'll have a link down to visualankyreads.wordpress.com down in the description box. And yeah, I did like a full review of this one when I read it like over a month ago now. So yeah, there you go. The hate you give. Um, I feel like this book hit me so hard on at so many points in the story. It was a very emotional read for me. And I thought it was just absolutely amazing. Um, I don't want to hype up the book as much as people hype it up a book, but at the same time, yes, I think people should read it. I think it's just a really good book. Um, I did a big full review of it on my blog as well, so you can go check that out if you want. I might actually do a late video review of it just because, you know, there's enough of those on, there's enough of those on booktube. And I feel like I get emotional when I talk about it, so I'm just not going to do that. But Falling Star was really, really nice. Um, and... Yeah, my review for it on my blog is, like, super long. I don't know where to start about the things that I liked about it. I love Star's uh, relationship with her, with her family. Um, her relationship with her boyfriend, Chris, in the story was really um, well done, in my opinion. I just thought it was really awesome. I don't know. The sense of community at times in the story was amazing. Um, almost where we saw people really coming together like a family. And I don't know. I just, I just really like this book a lot. And I feel like it was a very needed book. So, yeah, that's all I'm going to say about it, and I, that I think you should read it. If you haven't read it yet, I really love this book. Um, the second book in the Magnus Chase series, Magnus Chase and the Gods of Asgard, book two, The Hammer of Thor. Madness in France must find the Hammer of Thor um, in order to stop some things from happening. Yeah, you know, that type of stuff. Anyway, but yeah, I really enjoyed the story a lot, um, and... I feel like I, I feel like I liked it a bit more than the first book, and I love the first book. I think part of that might be just um, while the character exploration that we get in the story, we get to know a lot more about the character of Hearthstone and his background, and how it was and how it was for Hearthstone in Alfheim, Hearthstone's elf being um, an elf who was deaf, and how he was treated in the community. We get to see a lot more of that in this story, and I really like seeing that background for him, and just the exploration of Alfheim and their way that they the people are there was really interesting. Um, we get to know a lot a little bit more about Samira and how she reconciles or how she's able to balance being a Valkyrie and also being Muslim. Um, and being Muslim and knowing that Norse gods exist 
how she deals with that. And also, a lot, there was a lot more with Samira in the story because of the way the plot line went that I really liked. Uh, Magnus is great in the story. I love Magnus. I think Magnus is just really awesome. Um, Blitz is... You, I wish we had seen a bit more from Blitz in the story, but I gotta admit, I just really like Blitz and the things that Blitz is able to do. Um, and I just love the character. Some of the characters from Valhalla are... I feel like I would like to know more about them because we're going to get little bits and pieces of them. I feel like they are show up at the beginning, show up at the end type thing because they don't always go on the big quest or whatever the mission is of the book with Magnus. And I wish we knew a little bit more about those characters. Um, but their new character that we have, Alice Fierro, or Fieri, I don't know how to pronounce their name right now. Um, they are non-binary. And we have a non-binary, like, character in the story who is probably the love interest which makes Magnus probably pansexual at least and it also talks the book also talks about um, LGBT homelessness a little bit at one point in the story and yeah I just was just very very happy to see that in a story and I'm very very happy with the character I'm very happy with some of the things we found out about like Loki in the story I feel like there's a lot of interesting things happening with lore we met some interesting gods I just really, really like this book a lot. <laughs> yeah. I should do a video review of this book, probably. <laughs> I feel like I have a lot more to say. Um, and I probably will do that at some point, because I really like this book a lot. Um, but yeah. Go, read the Magnus Chase series. Even if you, I feel like, honestly, you don't have to read the previous series. You don't have to read Percy Jackson, My Heroes of Olympus, because the Norse mythology is so different. Um, and while there is a connection to the other one, Need, no one from the previous series has come in for more than like 20 pages of either of the Magnus Chase's books. Like I feel like we see a little bit of Annabeth for a little bit. And so I think you're okay. Um, so yeah, I really like the series a lot. But well, we talk about Assassin Timothy by Eric Cameron. This book follows Blake. Blake is not an assassin. And I think that was one of the big interesting things about this book is that you're following these assassin operations from per eyes of someone who's not an assassin. Um, essentially Blake's on the run and these, this assassin family is protecting um, them, and yeah, you get to see some crazy stuff happening, and when Blake's kind of a person who shies away from violence normally, but still wants revenge for something that was done to them in a previous book, and it was really interesting. Um, I didn't like this book the first time I tried to, tried to read it, I DNF'd it, and then I picked it back up again, because essentially what this book does is it jumps you right into the action, and you're in Meteor Rise, you're in the action in that first chapter, and you don't know what's going on, and you just gotta keep reading to find out. And I don't usually like things like that, but I, it just worked um, when I read it this time, and I just kept reading it, and I, and I started to really like it a lot. Also, the main character, Blake, is a lot of, fits a lot of diverse categories. Um, Blake is intersex. Blake is pan-romantic, gray-sexual, I believe, and also agender. And they're non-binary. Non-binary but mentally agender is, I believe, what they said in the book. Um, so yeah, and there's a lot of discussion about pronouns and what pronouns Blake wants to use at the moment. I like the way that when the other characters react to that, um, they just will ask Blake what pronouns they prefer to use at, a t at any moment, and I really, really like the way it was handled in the story. I like the way that Blake's love interest handled it, um, and the discussions that Blake and their love interest have in this book are really, really important, and are really well done discussions, and so I really, really like this story. Um, I gave it four stars, I think, because it is a little disjunct at points, it's just the pacing of it. I like the villain, I just thought there was something missing with the story, so I gave it four stars instead of five, but I do really like the story a lot. Valentine's Surprise. This was a good enough story. <laughs> like, I, I liked it. It was a solid Emma romance. It was about like, Isaac and Stuart. They're lovers, secretly, until one of them moves away. Um, one comes out, um, comes back to town, the other person's having difficulty with the idea of coming out, um, and the, they know, like, I don't know, it was, it was just like, you know, these two, it's about this couple, who were see, and a secret a couple, they're not a couple, and how they're trying to come back to each other, and it was good. And there was also a family aspect that came into it, like a, a supportive family aspect that came into it later in the story that I really, really liked. I, I think that ending really is what made me think, yeah, four stars. So I really liked it. It was all MM Romance. I've also read a lot of trash MM Romance in the last two week, months. So it didn't have a lot of competition. <laughs>
the stall. This is MM erotica. I'm just gonna say that right now. And it is interesting. And I feel like I should have hated it, but I gave it five stars because sometimes we have a short, you guys. Um, and you're wa reading it, you're reading it just from what it is. You're reading it like, okay, cool. Two guys, chemistry, bathroom, sex scene. But then all of a sudden, there's this twist. Because if a short has an amazing twist, you got me. And the twist made me like have to stop and go, oh my god, I know what's happening here. And continue to read because you just had to see the fallout. And the twist was like, wow. Um, and I got to the end of the story and I didn't know how to feel. And I was just like, I feel like... Yeah, I just I really liked it. Let's just say it was good. This is this is this author's debut. Um, um, in my romance, they haven't written anything, and I'm kind of excited to see what they write after this because this was really really good. Um, and like that twist. Oh my god! Like I can imagine watching this as a short like queer film, and like getting to that point in the film and being like blown away by it. like the by that reveal because I just didn't see it coming. Even though I did see it coming a little bit. I knew something was going to happen, but that's not what I thought was going to happen. <laughs> so, yeah. It was good. One night stand. So here's my issue with the one night stand. It wasn't actually a one night stand. That might be my biggest issue. Also, the main character has this really weird, like really, this conversation with their boss that isn't supposed to be awkward, that's really, really awkward for me to read. And so I knocked on some points for that, but overall it's a really solid story. It's literally about this guy who has one night stand the night or two nights after his long-term boyfriend leaves him, um, and what happens after that. And also, I gotta say that this guy's boyfriend was actually trash, and eventually he realizes that, yeah, his ex was kind of like a trash boyfriend to begin with, and that the main character focusing on his work and his career should not have been such an issue to his ex-boyfriend. Also, talking about twists and stories, this story had a twist that had me rolling on the floor laughing. Like, I fell off the bed. I was re I read in my romances in bed, usually, like, like re late at night. I had to, like, just, like, roll over off the bed and just, like, brace myself to on the ground for a second, because I was just like, that did not just happen. It was hilarious. Um, so yeah. <laughs> it was good. I, I gave it three stars, but it was, it was still good, you know? Like, I liked it. It was good. Love in a Library. I wanted to like this so bad, and it actually inspired me to write my own Love in a Library story where two people fall in love, and there's some type of library connection, because I wanted to read one that was good. This was so bad. <laughs> it just, like, I gave it two stars, because it wasn't, like, a one star eight, but it just wasn't good. Um, there wasn't a real connection between the characters really made. Um, the... It was kind of choppy and just a little bit too quick, and I feel like you just it just needed more, and needed so much more. And there were other issues with it too that I don't remember, but because I haven't looked at my review of it since then. But yeah, just now. Confessions of a male escort. Read the description. Look for any warning labels. It does have some heavy BDSM in it or, or something, I guess. Bonded submission. There's like, okay, but I gotta I gotta, I gotta explain it. This is a story about a male escort, and in this first story, someone who he worked, an, another sex worker, um, I forgot, forgot her name, I forgot the name, name, but um, she calls him up because she needs him to come in and help her with one of her clients, who likes to be humiliated, I guess. And I didn't think I would like the story, but I ended up giving it four stars. It was very, I thought it was very well written and a really interesting story. And it definitely makes you kind of want to read the rest of that series, which is what the intention of it was. It was a free story. Um, it makes you want to get the rest of the series. Even though I'm probably not going to do that, it made me want to. It really did. <laughs> so, yeah. We're going to just leave it at that. A Hits Conquest by Julie French. This is another trash book, as I would like to call it. Oh, there's so much sexism in this freaking book, and I don't understand how that could be a thing in a book written by a female author. The main, like, the, her gay characters, her, I guess her, her characters, who may not necessarily be gay, I guess, they could, they might be bi. There's never word like that used or anything, but, you know, her characters who are supposed to end up in this threesome, these three guys in the story, say the worst things about women 
oh my god, about some of the women in their lives in this fucking book during this camp, and I just can't fucking handle it. I was literally sitting there just like, are you kidding me They're that they're saying this right now? Like, are you fucking kidding me? Ah! Uh, especially about one who was supposedly was married and had kids. Um, oh my god, no. I'm not even going to get into what the one guy, Marty, says to his friend. Oh, you can still hook up with her. What happens here? Like, I, don't, I, I can't. I just, I can't. I'm not even going to re re repeat things from this book. Also, besides that, language-wise, it, it was just not written very well, I thought. I felt like there was these grand overtures in the narration that just didn't make sense. Um, and the way that the characters talked didn't make sense. <laughs> it was just like... Why are they talking like this now and they didn't talk like this before? I don't, it's, it's, just, it's just not good. And because of that, I think I'm going to hop to another book that I read by this author. So let me just look around for it really fast. Julie Fritz, Shot at Go. Okay, Shot at Go was a story about a guy who's dumped by his boyfriend who went on to date his best friend. Right? Yes. That's what it's about. That story I liked a lot better than his conquest. What I liked about I, what I didn't like about the story and why it's a little bit low on my stereo is it was just a really crap, not well done miscommunication plot is what we saw, um, and just some of the language of these two characters just didn't make sense to me. It, like it was essentially it was trying to go for like a pretty woman vibe. Um, essentially, our main character, the hockey guy who's positive or, or somewhat positive, um, goes to a strip club hooks up with a stripper, and then brings the stripper into his life, I guess. I don't know. It, it was giving me hella pretty woman vibes, uh, except for gay, and not as good at all. So, yeah, but it was better than his conquest. So it has that going for it. The Catcher's Box, foul language and unnecessary violence. Um, also, main character being so pent up and so... Um, emotionally pining over this character who did not deserve him, who was not worthy of him, and who was just complete trash. Like, this love interest is just not worth it at all. I feel like the main character had so much going for them, and they were hardworking and determined and a good person, and I feel like pining after this person who treated him like he didn't exist one minute and then wanted to fuck his brain out the next minute was not okay. Um, and just, it kind of sucked. It, it, like, it's just, like, no. No. So I think I did it with one star. Um, the Unnecessary Violence kind of just was the tip of the hat. It just kind of tipped it all on, tipped it on over, because I was already not feeling the book that much at that point. So, yeah. Extra Hot Latte. I don't know how many times this character has to tell you, but I'm straight, though. And the freaking, in his freaking, like, dialogue, but, like, I'm still straight. Or, like, something about a girlfriend, but I'm still doing this, but yada yada. I don't know why he had to keep saying that. Also, that coffee shop scene was kind of gross. I'm not going to say what scene, but I just, it wasn't, it wasn't sexy. It wasn't. It really wasn't. It was just kind of gross. And yeah, so I gave that one star too. Yeah, like a lot of trash characters. That's all I really read this month was a lot of trash characters and then the romance. But that's okay. Sometimes you get a good, sometimes you get a gold star that you can come back to and just be like, okay, how amazing that is, you know? But other times you get trash, like this stuff. All right, that is it for part one. Uh, part two will come eventually. I hope you all enjoyed this video and hope you're having a good morning, evening, or night, or whatever time it is as you're watching this. And I will see you all in my next video.